What's going on, everyone? So LeBron James and Austin Reeves, I fully expect to have a really good year coming up. Uh, Austin Reeves, I think, will very likely step into one of the main component role, right? I think him and Anthony Davis are going to kind of be the one and two options. Uh, not that LeBron James isn't still going to be LeBron James, but I just I don't think LeBron is going to try to dominate uh, the ball, dominate on the court as much as we have seen him in the past. Right, we saw LeBron take a huge backseat uh, throughout the course of the regular season and the playoffs. And my guess is he kind of defers to Austin Reeves, as we saw uh, in the playoffs. Right, how many times do we see LeBron James just kind of let Reeves get it going, especially with this roster, with this depth, with this talent? Austin Reeves, he's a guy that I expect to continue uh, the trajectory in which he started at the back half of last season. Right? He really sort of emerged and really started to come into his own and become a quality player uh, that hopefully uh, can translate into this season. There is some some concerns in that regard, right? I mean, you know, one is how much will LeBron actually refer, defer? Uh, I think he will. I think LeBron just kind of coasts this year. I do think he uh, he's going to get his 20-plus a game just because it's LeBron James. But beyond that, I really do think he kind of coasts. And if he does, then I think Austin Reeves, that'll give Austin Reeves more of an opportunity to average, you know, 18 plus a game. Uh, but also, you know, how much of that was just the unknown and surprise, right? Because teams, they didn't have the scouting report. They didn't have the the... Their last thought was like, oh, we need to shut down Austin Reeves. And you know, I've talked about this in the past. Paul George has had a very interesting conversation on his podcast about that, where he just was like, hey, you know, it's a big difference when you're just kind of a guy and you are able to kind of play the game the way you want to play it. It's a lot easier to score 20 than when teams actually start game planning, start executing for you. They put their best defensive guy on you, all of that stuff. He said everything just really changes uh, and it makes things a lot more difficult. That's a real thing. Also, the new NBA rule changes and the new sort of just direction in which the NBA is trying to go really is going to potentially hinder both LeBron James and Austin Reeves, but I think more so Austin Reeves, but we'll see. I'm not saying he can't correct it and make the adjustments, uh, but LeBron, that's going to be very interesting. Because the the rule in particular is the new flopping rule, right? They're giving technicals for players that flop. Now, many people like to make fun of LeBron and, you know, call him LaFlop and all that stuff and talk about how much he, he sells calls and stuff. And, look, he's talked about Dwayne Wade was the one that really kind of shined light on it and was like, hey, LeBron, like, he didn't flop early on. He, he just started having you because he couldn't get calls. And you watch now, and it's like, this dude, for being a super-duper star and being one of, if not the greatest players ever, right? Like, this dude doesn't get the calls the way he should. And it's kind of the Shaq treatment, right? Like, Shaquille O'Neal didn't get calls because if they called a foul every time he got fouled, then it would just be a Shaquille O'Neal free throw contest. So, I do get that, and I do understand, like, you know, when you call, talk about the LeBron effect, and he's just so much bigger, stronger, faster, physical than pretty much everyone else in the league. And so it makes it hard for the refs to really call a foul and know how much is he kind of, you know, embellishing it, how much is actually contact, how much was a foul. But we saw a lot this year of just LeBron James getting just blatantly fouled on several occasions at the end of games and throughout the course of games and just get no calls. And that was with him trying to embellish it and draw the contact and all of that, right? What's going to happen when he tries to do that, they don't call that, and then because they didn't call a foul, now he ends up getting a technical for flopping, right? And it's like, but no, it, they, it should have been called. He flopped because you missed the call, right? Like, there's that becomes a problem, right? And look, LeBron James is LeBron James. He's still going to go get his buckets. He's still going to go score his points. He's still going to do what he's capable of doing. 
But it really does beg the question of like, does this make things even harder and worse for LeBron James when he's a guy that just he couldn't get he couldn't buy a foul on most occasions? Or does this does this help him because now the refs know okay, like we we have to keep an eye on LeBron because he can't sell it, because if he sells it, then we have to call a technical. So, you know, let's does he does he kind of get the whistle swayed a little bit? Right, especially with the narrative of last year of like, dude, LeBron just can't get a call to save his life. Because again, I don't think it affects his game overall. Um not much more than it already has. I mean, the guy's already kind of settled into just being a three point shooter, right? Like, hopefully he's worked on that, because you know he's gonna probably still take eight threes a game. But when he does put the ball on the deck and get to the basket, do the rest become more mindful and kind of watch out for it more? That's that's a real question in my opinion. But I think more impactful than LeBron is potentially Austin Reeves. Because a lot of Austin Reeves' game is to kind of, you know, finagle his way into like the interior of the paint, get to like that mid-range area, um, or, you know, within that 10-foot area, and then draw the contact, sell the contact a little bit, and get the whistle and get to the free throw line, right? So, yes, the whistle dried up slightly in the playoffs, and he was able to kind of figure it out and play through it, but is he really going to be trying to sell that contact? Because, you know, I mean, obviously James Harden. James Harden is, I mean, he built the whole career off of selling contact and and flopping and whatnot, right? Chris Paul is another one, right? And Austin Reeves, in a lot of ways, a, a good amount of his offense was just drawing and creating contact, which they're trying to get rid of. They're trying to make it to where you can't initiate the contact, you can't really forcefully draw the contact, and if you sell it, then you're hit with the technical, right? And so... Is Austin Reeves going to be able to make those adjustments? It also comes down to like the refs and how do the refs kind of go about it, right? Because obviously we even saw in Summer League, they implemented this rule and we saw guys get technicals for selling the flop. And what was crazy is we saw people get technicals like plays later, not during the play, right? Like it was almost like it was being reviewed. I think it was the Golden State game where, like, the guy flopped, and then, like, three possessions later, they, like, decided to to blow the whistle on on the technical, and the other team got the technical, right? So, how do they go, how do they approach it? How do they go about it? Also, um, you know, do they, so you can't, how do they define what's selling contact or not, right? Because, like, you know, part of the game is being tactical, is part of the game is, you know, figuring out the opponent, right? It's chess. You know, you 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 get by your guy, you put him on your back, you, you let him kind of ride your back, and then when you feel him kind of pressing, you, you get the ball up and generate the end one. Do they now look at that as like, well, you know, you're embellishing the contact. Now you're flopping, right? When guys, they shoot the three ball and they you hit the ground or whatever, right? Can you not do that anymore? What happens at the end of games? You know, you'll see players at the end of games try to shoot the ball and, you know, initiate the contact and try to trick the ref into giving a foul. So if a team's down three and the game's over, do they just end the game or do they go back and get the, and give them a technical and now, you know, they lost by five? Like, it's just, it's going to be a gray area. And the problem is it's like most things, it's going to be by interpretation. And like most things, it's probably going to be a mess this year because it'll be the first year. So not only are you going to have things that are a mess, but on top of things that are a mess, it's going to be the first year and it's going to be all interpretation. Like, do I deem that a flop or not? Did I, does that, is that them embellishing it a little bit or is that them really actually getting hit? You know, so... I don't know. It's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see how they how the refs go about it and how much it changes ref to ref, right? 
And will Austin Reeves be a guy that can kind of get over that? Right? Can he is he a guy that can kind of uh you know make the adjustments accordingly? And if he can't, like how much does it impact and affect his two guys on the roster that I think these new rule changes and like what the league is trying to do affects the most. Right? Like those are the two guys that are just they they love to they like to sell and embellish on the contact. And in doing so now, that becomes a no no. And now you get a technical. And if you get, you know, multiple technicals, you're out of game. Like it's gonna have an impact. I really do. I really do and think and believe that it very likely has some effect on the overall game. And I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see how much it impacts Austin Reeves. Because, I mean, Austin Reeves is more than just that, right? He's not. Just, it's not like he just, every play, he's draw, draw, trying to draw. Like, no, he's not, he's not as bad as James Harden was in his heyday. But that is a big part of, like, what was successful for him. Being crafty, figuring out how to how to draw the contact and kind of embellish the contact a little bit and then get the and one where now it's like, well, if they don't call it, it's technical. And even if they do call it, they can review it. And is it a technical, like, you know, I just, it's going to be complicated, right? (laughs) To put it nicely, but I'm curious to see how much it affects these two, if at all, you know, maybe it doesn't, maybe it doesn't affect anything. You know, maybe they get like a couple here and there, I don't necessarily think they're going to each get like one a game or anything like that, but um you know how does it does it change anything in regards to to their games. Anyway, as always, this is a discussion. So, I pass the question on to you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? Do you think that yeah, this is very likely going to impact LeBron and you know, is it going to impact Austin Reeves? Do you think no? Like basketball players will adapt to it, they'll figure it out. And and I do think regardless they'll figure it out eventually. It's just this again, this is year one, a lot of gray area, a lot of interpretation, a lot of inconsistency. So you know, it, it's easier once you kind of have an understanding rather than like, oh well, even if I didn't flop, they could de- deem it as a flop, right? So I don't know. Anyway, again, love to hear it. Let me know down in the comments.